Welcome back, San Diego, to Channel 9 News. It's 8.31 a.m. on a Saturday. I'm your main anchor, Timmy Tampson. And I'm your side anchor, Carly B. So, um, have you heard about the, um, it's been a rise in hit and runs um, recently, and I feel like a lot of these drivers need to be more safe, and especially like my designated driver needs to be more safe when they're driving, because I heard you going like 60 miles per hour last week, and everyone needs to be more safe when driving, let's be honest. Yeah, I, I was doing a healthy 60, but I don't see how that's relevant. We're live on the air, Carly. Well, I know we're live on the air, but like going 60 miles per hour and then there's a a car next to you going 30, I don't think it's a good idea, especially if you accidentally hit each other. So I, I can take you home, Carly. It's okay. You don't have to insult my driving skills. I can't believe you're drunk on the air again. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Our top story tonight, there was actually an explosion at the board game factory last night. Reportedly, billions were lost in Monopoly money. On the scene now is our field reporter, Hannah Marin. Hello, yes, it's me, Hannah Marin. Uh, I feel like you might have uh, misinterpreted the story. I am in the mountains of France. Oh my God, uh, there are actual bicycles. Uh, I, I think we maybe we should talk about that hit and run thing that Carly was bringing up. Uh, I know it's not cars, but this is not the most pleasant thing I've ever experienced. Um, anyway, there was a giant explosion at the Monopoly factory in uh, a French town right near here. And um, excuse me, I'm right here. Oh my, uh, and uh, the money, it went everywhere. Oh my God, uh, the just Monopoly money all through the air. Uh, you can even sort of see a cloud still remaining behind me. Um, uh, back to you. You see, Timmy, like, these hit and runs are getting out of control. I think you should watch your driving, too. I mean, like, last week, you hit that car going 30 miles per hour while you're going 60 miles per hour. Got rid of the windshield. It's all cracked now. I don't see how that's relevant to the Saturday morning news. I mean, she's getting run over. Our field reporter getting run over by by bicycles. That's a hit and run. That was the wrong field reporter. Well, you, you have to pay attention now. This is why you should be my designated driver, not the news anchor. I don't understand why we're talking about this right now. Someone died in a hit and run yesterday. Yeah, hit and runs happen. I think 30 more has happened in the last minute. Okay, Liz, this isn't an editorial piece. You're not supposed to put your opinions into it. I, still I, think, I think you're a little I think you're a little confused, Carly. I think Listen, listen. Let, let's just take it to weather. Fine, okay. Weather. Yes, hello. Theodore Schneebly here with your weather. Well, today is usual today is mostly in average day in terms of weather. The sun is beating down. It's a tad breezy. I'd say appropriate weather to perhaps wear a beanie to protect your ears from the breeze. Perhaps even a nice mm, fedora, maybe even a trilby to protect your your eyes from, from the glare of the sun. Of course, Wide-brimmed hats might not be the way to go for today, of course. They could impede your vision. I've heard hit and runs are a big issue in these current days, but I'd say that is a small price to pay for fashion. After all, it would be a crime to run over someone wearing such a dashing lid. <laughs> but, but I digress. That, that's enough for weather today. Weather brings up a good point. People who are wearing sun hats usually get run over and, and they're hit and run. And if I do remember correctly, last week you hit and ran over an old lady wearing a white sunburned hat. That's true, but you, you can't blame that on me. It was her who was wearing the hat. She was practically asking for it. Besides, I don't see how this is relevant. 
it runs on this on the skyrocket. Of course they want to know who did it, who's doing it, and they especially want to know just your opinion about what's happening. I mean, you are a reporter. What are you not? Report the details, report the facts. Hey, all right, I'm sorry. I'm so you know what? This news channel's falling apart. We just had we just had the hat collector do our weather. We haven't been able to get another man on that position in the past five years. I hate that guy. You know what? I'm done with this. I quit. Put it on technical difficulty. And scene. Well done, Callum, C, and uh, Ben, and Hannah. Very good job. Um, and welcome you to the third annual improv show. Uh, we uh, today we have a all star cast to present to you and keep you entertained for the next hour or so. Uh, let's uh, let's introduce that cast. Uh, I'll, I'll you know I'll start. My name is Patrick Vernon. I'm a senior this year. I'm the president of Improv Club, and uh, I'm the uh, gruff older character. You know, the mentor for the, but he doesn't like the new guy. Hi, I'm Hannah Marin. I'm a junior and I am the vice president. I am uh, starting to be concerned that I might be the new guy. Hi, I'm Callum Ackerman. I'm 17 and three quarters. I am a senior. Hi, I'm Ben Herring. I'm also a senior and rocks are pretty cool. Hi, I'm Griffin Keel. Um, I'm not a senior. Uh, I'm a junior. Hi, I'm Billy Atkinson. I'm a junior and I'm prematurely balding. Hi, Ivan, junior here. Uh, look behind you. Hi, I'm Colin Ryan. I'm a senior at Smyrna Park High School and I drink my water from the tap. Hi, I'm C, a sophomore at Smyrna Park High School and this isn't my shirt. And hi, I'm Paige. I'm a sophomore, and my hair is two colors, but I won't tell you which ones. So, once again, uh, thank you all for joining us for this show. We're going to move right into our second game, which is Accents. Um, for this game, we have Ben and Colin, uh, who will be our improvisers. I will be moderating. I have a whole list of accents, uh, which I will be calling out mid-scene, and they have to switch to using those accents. Um, your relationship for this game are, is uh, a UPS and an Amazon delivery person delivering to the same house. Colin and Ben, you are good to go. Didn't expect to see you around these parts anymore. Don't you know this is our turf? Hey, you're, you're the new guy on, the, on these streets. UPS, we've been around way before you have. Then why are you still... <laughs> then why aren't you in charge of this block anymore? Hmm? Minnesota. You know, here in Minnesota, you guys got the upper edge. I will say it's a little unfair. You guys have little weasels, little rats, pushing us out of our game. One day. One day. Maybe one day, but not today, you know. Amazon has a superior technological efficiency. And UPS is a thing of the past. We might be a thing, a thing of the past, but uh, you know, we've been around longer. We have, we have, we have ideals. We have things we fight for. We're stronger than you, you, you wimpy millennials. Well, maybe it's time for the sun to set on the UPS. I'd say it's about time. How dare you! Not over yet. We still have fighting us. French. Oh, I would like to see you try. Try to oversaw us here at Amazon. How dare you insult my how dare you insult my uh my home, my pride. Oh, you Amazon employees, you you believe you are so much better than everybody else, but uh you uh you go and under You think you're better than me? I'm a one. Oui. We do not even use trucks to deliver our packages anymore. We use drones, fancy drones with little cameras on them. Use the drones? The oh, Joker. Yeah, you... you see, we use slave labor. It's highly effective. 
Well, of course, so do we! We just use the slaves to pilot drones instead of trucks! Isn't that silly? Yeah, it's silly, but, uh, I don't think you see the point, see? It makes- it hurts them more when you make them walk across the ice. Get to deliver the packages by hand. Say, you want to see a magic trick? I'm going to make this package disappear. By giving it to this child. By making it, I'm going to give this package to Mickey Mouse. And he's going to, to deliver it for me. He's my creation, my slave. He delivers his, he, he delivers his packages ten times at the rate of, of, your, of your pesky drones. Well, uh, gotta hand it to you, sir. You do know how to handle your slaves, but counterpoint. I'd say it's even more demoralizing for a minimum wage worker to have to go retrieve and repair the drone that they crash, if they crash it. Maybe even pay for it if it's beyond repair. Fair enough, fair enough. Um, I must say, though, that sending persons to um, dangerous areas such as uh, of, of valleys and trenches and various sewage sewage pipes to make them deliver uh, them when the, the weather is not ideal is much more cruel, especially when they come back because they are quite stinky. Meat grinder. <laughs> Amazing job, Ben and Colin. Uh, we will be moving on to our next game, which is dating game. Uh, Patrick uh, will be our bachelor for this evening. Our contestants are C, Billy, and Colin. Uh, so the way that this game works, Patrick will leave and we will give quirks to each of our three contestants. Um, one of them is there for the wrong reason. One of them is every character from something. And the last one is an inanimate object. Um, and Patrick will ask questions in a dating show style, and by the end, we'll try and guess what each of these quirks are. So Patrick, if you want to get out of here. Oh, I'll be Bachelor. Um, so our first contestant is C. Uh, C, you think that you are at an art auction. Are you good with that? All right. Billy, can you be every character from The Lord of the Rings? <laughs> awesome. And finally, it is Colin. Colin, can you be a fedora? Yeah, I can. All right. Um, I will summon Patrick back. Welcome back, Patrick. You are good to start whenever you're ready. Hello. My name is Sandra. And uh, today... You know, I am, I'm really, I'm looking for love, you know? So that's why uh, I'm here on the dating game. Oh my gosh. Okay, uh, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just so excited. I'm going to get started. And I'm going to start with the first question, which uh, contestant number one, um, what is your ideal date? 200, 200. Um, um, my ideal date um, I think if you buy some like Van Goghs, maybe some Rembrandts, uh, three hundred, three hundred, three hundred. Um, um, maybe like like a museum. I like museums. Four hundred, four hundred. Yes. Okay. Um, I think just going to an art museum would be fun. Just any kind of museum. I love museums, and I I love works of art. Wow, you want to go on 400 dates right off the bat. That's so forward of you. I love it. Contestant number two, what about your ideal date? Oh, Mr. Vernon, uh, I, I haven't, I think for my ideal first date, it'd be something close to home, close to the, close to wh what I know. I, I haven't gone much, much farther than home from this. And I think I'd want to stay here in, in the valley with you and, and just have a lovely evening. 
That is so sweet. I love like a movie date, like a Netflix and chill type thing. That's right up my alley. But what about you, contestant number three? What about, What is your ideal date? My ideal date is less about the where, with who. I believe I belong on someone who has studied the blade, who knows their way around Japanese architecture, and uh, it's truly a master assassin. Contestant number three, you're so cultured and interesting. Wow. I'm going to move on, though. Uh, contestant number one, I do want to know, what, what feature of a person is generally what you look for in a uh, relationship? 150. Uh, I genuinely like just having a lot of cash on hand because, like, my hobbies, they just, I need a lot of money for my hobbies because, like, I love, I love, I love to collect things. Uh, 50 to 50. Um, but honestly, I just think it's having a lot of money. It's just a lot of security, like, job security, anything. The markets go down. The prices go up. 400, 400. Um, that's really just it. It's like a lot of money. Yeah, I like money. Contestant number one is a gold digger. Oh my gosh. Contestant number two, what about you? What's your favorite feature of a person? I value punctuality. Uh, as you know, a wizard is never late. And I value that ins insane in my partner. Uh, if my partner does not possess these qualities, they shall not pass into the next phase of dating. Wow, I, I do like a man who's on time. Uh, what about contestant number three, your ideal uh, feature of a person? You know, in my long life, I've been with many people who, unfortunately, quite greasy heads. I aspire to belong to someone who uses shampoo because it makes their head not greasy, but soft and dry. I long to be with someone who treats me right, you know, that uses me for my purpose, that uses me to shield them from harm. It's like violent rays. I value a person's head the most, I believe. Contestant number three, oh, you're, oh my gosh, you, are you really, I can tell that you, you like the small things. You, you really look at the small details. Um, contestant number one, I, I don't, I don't need to come across wrong when I say this, but I am not for sale at an auction, okay? I, I am not just a work of art for you to admire. I, I am not that I could not go out with you. And contest number two, you know, J.R.R. Tolkien's The Hobbit and or Lord of the Rings is just not really my style, you know? I can't I can't sit still long enough to watch those uh, those films. But contestant number three, you you really interest me. Uh, you know, I, and I think I, I wanna, you know, before I seal the deal with you, I just wanna ask one more question of you. And that is uh, that contestant number three, I would like to know uh, if we were to have a child together, what would you name it? That's a very interesting question. I may have to think long and hard about that. Um, Zachary, because I knew a Zachary once. He was a very nice man, a little bit uh, unique. He had, uh, but he used me quite well. He really loved me, and he wore me in all of his photo shoots he sent to reddit.com. And he uh, really treated me right. And I feel like if we name our child Zachary, he might exude those same qualities of his love for Doritos, Mountain Dew, and his study of the blade, and also the way he would treat me right. Contestant number three, I'm just, you know, I'm, it's, I'm, it's coming to me now that I've been sitting here talking to a a ninja headband sitting at like a samurai helmet type deal uh but you know i might need to 
I, I might need to ask you one more thing, one final thing before, you know, you know, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, where, if you could travel anywhere in the world, would you travel? Well, that'd be an easy one. Obviously, Japan, because that's where everyone who uses me wants to go. And uh, I feel like, though you may not realize it, because, um, you know, in a past life, you would see me on most average people, but as times have evolved, a certain characteristic of person have, have decided to use me. And I feel like now that has inspired me to um, reach, reach the land of Japan. I couldn't, I can't. No, I just can't go, I cannot date a person who I can't get a read on. And I have no idea just who or what you are. Uh, Scene. Um, what was he? Colin was a fedora. Uh, you were kind of close with the the samurai headband. I got you. Yeah. Um, you got that the headwear right. Uh, great job. I think it's time to move on to our next game of the evening. This game goes by the title of He Said, She Said. Uh, in this game, we're going to see Paige and C uh, have a scene together. Uh, the catch is that Griffin Keel. At any, after every line that Paige and C say, will then give a, a short bit of narration about how they said that line. Paige, C, your get will be public restroom. You are in a public restroom. You two may begin. Oh, sorry, you can go first. Oh, no, no, I, I'm, I'm sorry. Embarrassed. I, I'm, I'm sorry, I, you, you can go first. She said, taking a couple steps back. No, 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 I insist. I really don't need to go that bad, and you seem like you really do. She said, pleading for the other person to go first. I, no, I, I, I'm sorry. The last time that um, I went before someone else didn't quite make it, and I don't know what has to happen to you. She said, looking off into the distance remembering the past well i'm sorry they didn't make it back from the bathroom where where did they go she said mortified right there she said pointing at the hole in the ground <laughs> and that's always been her i've been coming to this park for years i've never noticed that what did you what did you just show me she said, horrified at the unmarked grave that she was just shown. <laughs> this grave, it's been here since last September. Here's my best friend. Her name was Amber. She said, with an air of... <laughs> yep. And, and you went before her in the bathroom, and that's why she lies in that unmarked grave. But the yeah. line is so long. There must have been thousands of people that went before you. How are they not gone? She said, trying to clarify what C had said. Well, well you see, um, at that point, you really had to go. Beforehand, you didn't have to go. And it would just make me feel a lot better if, if you went first, because... I'm really, really stressed out. I don't want someone else to die because I went to the bathroom first. She said, uh, with the sound of remorse in her voice. I'll go. I'll, I'll do this for you. But just know that every ounce of my being, being wants me to have you go before me. She said, taking a step forward confidently. Thank you. Thank you, kind stranger, for going to the bathroom before I do. She said with tears in her eyes of gratefulness. Scene. <laughs> well done. Very well done. All right. Uh, our next game will be Number of Words with Billy, Griffin, and Ivan. Um, each of them will get a assigned number, and every line that they say has to be exactly that number of words. 
Billy will have the shortest amount of words. For that, I will be rolling a six-sided die. Billy, you have two words. Next up is Griffin. Griffin, I will be rolling for again. He can have up to 12 words. Griffin, you have eight words. Is that good? Okay. And finally, Ivan will have a maximum of 20 potential words. And for that, we will be rolling the 20 sided die. Ivan, you have 19 words. Good. Uh, so for your suggestion, uh, we will be giving you a movie that you can pull whatever you want from to inspire your scene. Um, your movie is Indiana Jones. Sup, homie? Hey, dog. How's it going, my main man? Not bad. Good to hear. Hey, you hear Indiana Jones? <laughs> Not yet. Uh, it's a great movie, and I recommend. You recommend? Watching it, of course, is what I meant. That's cool. Yeah, my favorite part is when... <laughs> when what? <laughs> he... Whip. He whip? <laughs> he whip. He has whip. And he... Use it is I, the Indiana Jones that came out of the movie that you guys talked about recently. Indiana Yo, Jones, it's Indiana Jones, he came from the TV. Indy Whip, that's right. That's a real whip right there. I have been practicing the whip for countless ages now. Are impressed? Yes, I'm Billy. so impressed. He does whip. I can... You can? See that he is whipping in front of us, and... It's impressive. Indy! Nay, nay! <laughs> Last time I nay nayed, an evil archaeologist came to me and stole an artifact that I had struggled finding. That sucks. What, what was said artifact you now search for? It was the Golden Idol from American Idol. I stole it from one of the judges that was there. Which judge? Was it Blake Shelton? I hate that guy. It was Blake Shelton. He came into my house, broke the door, <laughs> then stole the artifact, and then left. He's lame. Classic Blake Shelton. I hate that guy a lot. Scene. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely job, all of you. Our next game of the evening is a little ditty called Angel and Devil. Now, the way Angel and Devil works is we're going to have a two-person scene featuring um, Ivan and Paige. Now, the twist to this scene is that Ivan is going to have an angel on one shoulder and a devil on the other that'll speak to him in whispers. Uh, the angel for the scene is going to be Hannah Marin, and I will be the devil. Now, uh, Ivan, Paige, your get is going to be console. You two may begin. Uh, did you get the game for console? Oh, I can't believe I forgot the game. Uh, but now we have nothing to play. We just have a console and no game. Well, can't we use, like, old 
cassettes to put in the Wii? The, the Wii doesn't take cassettes unless... I mean, does it? Do you, have you learned? I haven't tried it yet. Uh, but, uh... Mm. Ivan, you know you didn't want to spend 60 bones on that game. Uh, that is true. It is a lot of money. Ivan. I'm with the devil here. I'm going to be honest. That's $60. How are you going to save this one, Ivan? You've got to keep lying to her. That's the only way. I mean, you could, but maybe don't. Uh, I mean, yeah, that is true. Surely Honestly, there's another way to get... Surely there's another way to get around that $60 price tag. You could save coupons or... Steal it! Uh, you know what? You're right. Hey there. Listen to me. I did not want to spend $60 on another Mario game, okay? Well, you didn't have to get a $60 game. We just need, like, literally any game. Well, you know what? Come with me. We're going to steal one of the games. What? Okay. All right. Once the game, and once the game's stolen, we'll blame her for the crime. I'm gonna be honest. I uh, I don't really see the point of blaming her. Don't you just want the game? Aren't you gonna play the game with? It? This seems a little unnecessary. Ivan, you know. Maybe I'm missing you, something, but. Ivan, you know you can't get caught for this. It's Mario. The last time you were caught for stealing Mario, they sent you to Alcatraz. Do you want to go back there, Ivan? No, 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 sir. Blame her. Ah. Uh. All right. Wait, is, is that the police over there? Oh no! <laughs> Run! Take the Mario game! Let's go! Uh, I... Uh... Woo! Woo! Oh, they got Wait. us! Listen, I know you want to blame her, but who are you going to play Mario Kart with if she's in jail? I, I don't know. With I have two hands. And Mario Kart's got a solo game player, a hey, yeah, CPUs. He can do it. He can handle not himself, fun. Angel. Everyone, everyone knows that's not as fun. Come on, you have to, you have to stick with your friend. Okay. Just because you met her in Alcatraz, For Mario you Kart. can't send her back. For Mario Kart. Yeah, Mr. Policeman. You know what? This Mario game was too expensive. So we stole it, and we're not going back to Alcatraz. And scene. <laughs> <laughs> well, well done, everyone. Our second to last game of the evening is a little fun one that we call New Choice. Now, in this game, we're going to have Paige and Callum have a regular two-person scene. Catch is that at any point, I can call New Choice, and they'll have to come up with something new to say. Paige, Callum, your get is alarm clock. You two have the floor. Oh my god, Dad, you can't just do that to my alarm clock. I have to touch that every morning. What do you mean? Spraying it down with water is the only way to get it clean. I have to soak it. Yeah, but don't use the dirty dish water. That's nasty. I'm reusing it. I'm keeping... The, the planet clean. Are, are you telling me you want me to waste water? Well, no, I'm not saying you should waste water, but I just New don't choice. want... Well, I mean, yeah, you could waste water. New choice. I mean, why do you care about the elephants in Africa? They're probably going to die in. Might as well just start putting a nasty cornbread-infused liquid on my alarm clock. Don't you say that. The elephants in Africa would want you to have a clean alarm clock. And the only way I'm going to do that is by washing it in the dirty dishwasher water. Well, I know, I know you care a lot about the elephants, Dad. But I just don't want to touch a greasy wine, cornbread, disgusting... I don't want to touch a, a sparkly clean alarm clock. That has, I don't want to touch any bits of food... That have been left in the dishwasher. 
I don't want to use my alarm clock anymore now that you've ruined it. I'm done. Well, you know what? Fine. If you don't want a clean alarm clock, I won't give you a clean alarm clock. Have fun with your dirty alarm clock your every choice. day. I'm not going to clean it. Have fun. Because I'm choice. taking your alarm clock. <laughs> don't have fun. You are not allowed to have fun in this household. Your I'm not allowed to. Get out. You're not allowed in this household anymore if I'm not allowed to clean the things in my house. Oh my god, are, are you kicking me out? Where, where am I gonna go? I don't know. You can take Your the choice. alarm clock. You can go to Aunt Betsy's. I'm sure Your she's choice. got a alarm clock. You can go to the circus for all I care. Your choice. You just You can go with your stupid alarm clock and you can you can go to your friend's house. I'm sure th I'm sure I'm sure they're grateful that their alarm clocks are cleaned every day. Dad, this is exactly why mom left us. Because you poured mouthwash on her bedside table. New choice. Because you poured NyQuil on her bedside table. New choice. Because you poured sticky apple juice on her bedside table. New choice. Because you spilled mouthwash on a dog. New choice. Because you spilled her mother's ashes all over her bedside table. New choice. Because you shaved your gross armpits all over her dog. New choice. Because you shaved your dirty gross scalp all over her bedside table. New choice. Because you wouldn't stop peeling potatoes all over her dog. New choice. Because you wouldn't stop shaving her dog over her bedside table. I just thought it added something and it wasn't, it wasn't my fault she left. It was yours because you every morning had a dirty alarm clock and that's why every day I've been cleaning it. With dirty dish water? <laughs> that's the only way I that's the way my father brought me up, cleaning alarm clocks and dirty dishwater. You that? should be proud. Maybe I will leave. Maybe I will. Maybe I'll stop calling you dad, Henry. <laughs> I, I don't know what else to say. You can clean your own alarm clock. And if you want to use clean water, see what that brings you. Scene. Well done, you two. Very well, very well done. For our last game of this evening, we will be playing Scenes from a Hat, except it is Scenes from My Easter Basket. Um, so if everyone can turn their cameras off, most of these came from you guys on our Instagram page, which you should follow. Um, so I will be pulling prompts from here. Uh, and you'll get little one-line scenes from everyone else. And our first get is, you're gonna hate me for this one, weird times to break into song. Okay, you need to listen to me. Your mother, she passed away. Yeah, I'm sorry, your diagnosis doesn't look good, but here's one thing I'll tell you. We are going to take out your wisdom teeth. We are off to assassinate JFK. Guys, remember that this is a play, not a musical. Uh, hey, uh, Henry, this is kind of awkward, but you've got a booger in your nose. Class, you may begin your AP tests. You have type 2 diabetes. You know, and I just think you're, you're, you're really cute. So today is going to be the day that we throw it all back to you. Okay. Yeah, things between your mother and I just haven't been working out. Um, if you have one shot. Would you take it or let it slip? I've only got one hour left to complete the no singing for 24 hours. I'm gonna win. 
Yeah, Trisha, I know this is awkward because we've been like, we broke up like a year or two ago, but uh, I've got AIDS, AIDS, AIDS. And Burr, I'm not gonna waste my shot! Yeah, yeah, no pickles on that. That's correct. I want it that way. Anna, can we get another get? Absolutely. Let's see. We have the worst time to have to tie your shoes. On your marks, get set. Oh, oh, oh sorry. Keep running. They're going to catch us. Wait, sorry, one sorry. Wee, wee. Oh wait. <sighs> this Tour de France sure is going well. Thanks for giving me my first flight lesson. Yeah, I, sorry, I just got to do one thing real quick. Rule number one of rock climbing is don't look up uh, one minute. So this is the Velcro convention. Will you, oh, one sec. I just love zip lining. Oh, oh my God. Let's get a new get, Hannah. Just the worst ghost in general. Hey, yeah, I'm a ghost. <gasps> ghost. Hey down there. You up? Yeah, I just think you're really cute, so today is gonna be the day that we grow it all. Hiya! My name's Casper. Yeah, no, I'm I'm Slimer. No, I don't like haunt or anything. I I I eat hot dogs. No, no, keep going. Mom, Dad, I want to be a Ghostbuster. Um, I've decided in the afterlife I'm going to perfect my re recorder skills. I've got it. I know what I'm going to do. My first act as a ghost, I'm going to possess this children's doll. Why, why did I think it was a good idea to possess this tree? Why did, why, why did I think that was good? Hey, Georgie, uh, you want this, uh, what is this thing? Oh, I want this little sailboat. Dude. What are you doing here? This is my mausoleum. Did you not see my name engraved on the door? Yeah, in my free time, I like to ectoplasm all over the food at the school cafeteria. Hey, man, I'm floating here. Luigi, are you about this mansion? Oh, Hamlet, kill them all! Yo, Macbeth, remember that one time you had me executed? That was pretty fun, wasn't it? Okay, so for Halloween... I'm going to put a blanket over me and poke two holes his eyes. Let's do one more get, Hannah. All right. Lucky for you, we have exactly one more get. We have the least appropriate situations to ask for someone's phone number. Oh, I'm so glad to be at this family reunion. Hey, so I know you just arrested me, but would you want to... Um, first off, I have some bad news. Your uh, husband is dead, but on a different note... Hey, I was wondering if you ha had your dead husband's phone number. Students, we will be doing uh, online school starting on Tuesday. So uh, if any of you have any questions, you know... Uh, just hit hit my line. I do. Ooh. Whoa, you just killed JFK! Seems like the identification code on your mother's corpse is missing a couple digits. Have any extra I could borrow? Seems like after the, uh, buzzsaw incident I've been missing a couple of digits. Think, uh, you could give me some? We finally found, found the serial killer. Do you think he has any digits I could borrow? Okay, kids, co come on back inside. Recess is over. Hey, Jimmy, 
You got any digits I can borrow? Hey, this person with a lot of electric parts at their house is pretty cute. You think he has any digitals I can borrow? Yeah, this ghost has been haunting me for a while. I wonder if he has any digits I could borrow. You're pretty cool, like, uh, for a little person. Do you have any midgets I could borrow? Human, I find you amusing. Would you be so kind as to provide me with your cellular device? Hey, you in the mirror. You look kind of cute. Hey, you're dirty down here. Can I, get, can I get your phone number? I heard you have ADHD. You got any fidgets I can borrow? Let's get another get, Hannah. All right. Uh, let's see. We have one more. Or more, depending. Um, and for this one, we have... If calling dibs was considered a universally acceptable method of selection. Dibs. Ha! I'm president. Okay, now which one of us is going to go kill JFK? All right, I think most of us can escape, but one of us is going to have to go cause a distraction while the rest of us get out. Okay, let's call Dibs to see who can press all the elevator buttons. Dibs! Okay, now I'm going to need one of you as hostages. You, who called Dibs. A nice birthday gift your mom gave you. Dibs! Shame. Today's a sad day, but it does look like we're going to have to send one in to the currently exploding nuclear reactor. Congratulations, Mrs. Johnson. The birth was successful. Dibs. All right, this lifeboat's almost at full capacity. We've only got room for one more person. Okay, whoever calls Dibs agrees to have less than minimum wage, okay? Okay. Yo, I called Dibs on your credit card. I uh, see you signed a new patent there. Dibs! Hey man, Dibs on your car. Well, someone needs to be the general of our army. They're sending one of us to the electric chair. And scene. This, uh... That's going to conclude the third annual improv show. Well done, everybody. We all did a fantastic job today. And, uh, yeah, we have two other shows that are on this YouTube channel. You can go check those out if you want. And uh, thank you for coming tonight. I hope you were entertained at the very least. And uh, have a nice night. Hey, my name's Troy. My name's Trevor. I'm gonna play you a song. Today is gonna be the day that they're gonna throw it back to you. By now, you should have somehow realized what you gotta do. I don't believe that anybody feels the way I do about you now Backbeat word is on the street that the fire in your heart is out I'm sure you heard it so before but you never really had a doubt I don't believe that anybody feels the way I do about you now And all the roads we had to walk are winding And all the lights that lead us there are blinding There are many things that I would like to say to you But I don't know how Cause maybe You're gonna be the one that saves me After all, you're my wonder wall. Because the camera will be on you the whole I'm glowing.